Hello, and welcome to Valley Veterans, a program sponsored and produced through the Miami Valley Veterans Museum at the DATV studios here in Dayton, Ohio. Welcome. I'd like to especially welcome our two guests today, both Navy veterans, but their participation in the American Legion is what we most appreciate. And we have with us today Gary Felver, right, right there, and also, of course, Craig uh, Miller, and they each have different responsibilities with the American Legion. Let me just read a little bit of where the American Legion finds its history. American Legion, commonly known as the Legion, is a nonprofit organization of U.S. war veterans headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana. Made up of state, U.S., territory, overseas departments, and these in turn are made up of local posts. So far, correct? Yes. All right, Wikipedia is doing a good job. <laughs> The organization was formed on March 15, 1919 in Paris, France by a thousand officers and men of the American Expeditionary Forces, AEF, and it was chartered on September 16, 1919 by the United States Congress. The Legion played the leading role in the drafting and passing of the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, commonly known as the GI Bill. GI Bill. You got it. In addition to organizing commemorative events, members provide assistance at Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, VA, hospitals and clinics. It's active and issue-oriented U.S. politics. Its primary political activity is lobbying on behalf of interest of veterans and service members, including support for benefits such as pensions and the Veterans Health Administration. It has also been historically promoting Americanism, individual obligation to the community, state, nation, peace, and goodwill. I think that is a very good testament to what your organization has done over the years. Craig, as a commander, tell us about your the post, uh, a little bit. Of, I've read this history that's gone back decades. Can you share with us a little history of the post and what you've been doing with that post for some time? So I've been a member of the post for about four years now. Um, I joined, obviously, because I love the bull and I had a friend ask me to come bull in the, on, on a tournament with them one time and uh, I've been members of other social clubs and uh, when I joined the club I thought I was just going to join the bull you know being a veteran I never really thought too much about joining the American Legion and since I've gotten there it's been meant a lot to me for the way that we help the community and the local you know youth programs and things like that as well as the the different things that we support through the Americanism test, the boys state, girls state things that um, we're supporting through our goodwill. You know, it's not, at first I thought it was just a social club, a place to hang out with my military friends and, you know, maybe have a beer or two with them, but it's grown to be more than that to me. You know, I, I, I A band enjoy, of brothers, huh? Yeah, it's kind of a band yeah. of brothers. You know, I've made a lot of new friends up there you know, younger than me, older than me, and, and I enjoy going and, and sharing stories with them, so. Well, it sounds like you've got a, in addition to family, you've got a second love in your life, and that's to be with these, as we call them, a band of brothers, all that kind of thing. Gary, you uh, chuckled a little bit earlier before the program <laughs> when I asked you what you do, with the, and you said uh, you head up several committees. Yes. Well. Uh, I've been a member for 20 years, and I decided to join after September 11th happened. Uh, prior to that, I didn't feel I'd done anything in the service. Uh, as far as I went in combat or anything, so I never joined. But that patriotism really kicked in after 9-11. And I jumped in with both feet, and they just kept piling stuff on to me. So <laughs> uh, I've been an officer all but one year since I've been there. And I head up Americanism, uh, children and youth, um, help out with Legion baseball. So uh, it's hard to find volunteers. Everybody wants to come down and sit around and talk, but it's hard to find the volunteers. So I go out and recruit people like Craig. <laughs> <laughs> he was new and I snagged him. So. <laughs> so we've got a few of them. Uh, the new guys we're trying to get involved. Uh, it's just the ones that's been there for years. It's hard to get them to step up. So, what's the main attraction when you approach people and you recruit them? 
what uh, what really turns them around and says, yeah, I'd like to join, I'd like to serve? Uh, I try to do the benefit package, uh, what the Legion does for the veterans. You explained a lot of that with your introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, their compensation and pension and GI Bill, home loans, uh, none of that would be available if we didn't lobby in Congress. And the only way we can lobby there is having the numbers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so for the sure. more people we get signed up as membership, the more voice we have in Congress. And that's what I try to, to push on people. Mm -hmm. The uh, when, I, and when I use the word post, for those that aren't totally familiar with that term, every organization has a term that denotes their unit uh, relative to perhaps where they're located. Uh, tell me more. Uh, Craig, about the post. Um, our post is at 301 West Water Street in Piqua, um, and it was formerly a house. I mean, right in. Well, there was a house there, there and it was right donated for a dollar to, to the veterans of Piqua. Mm. And that's when the home was built in 1947. So, I mean, I guess technically it's two stories with a basement. I mean, <laughs> we have the social club in there. Um, <laughs> really, I'm kind of drawing well, the line. Well, uh, those I mean, veterans that are seeking your services and so forth today with online app applications and so forth, you won't necessarily have that many people visiting the house as you perhaps do communicate in other ways. Right. Well, we have a lot of members that join our post and never step foot in it. Mm -hmm. They want to be that behind the scenes person. And you have those that come in and socialize, as I discussed before, that that's all they want to do. And you have the handful that, that make sure the post runs, make sure that the income is made to sustain the post and charities is uh, brought in so we can help out in the community help a lot of the youth groups. That's why I took one as youth chairman, so I can make sure the local baseball, football, soccer, something's there that's uh, positive for the children. Keep them off the streets. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a brochure here, which I think the camera picks up quite well. And uh, <clears throat> we've got a young lady there as well, as you noted there. Mm -hmm. Uh, what sort of are there specific directions in this day and age of uh, seeing opportunities for women as men have had for a long time? Are there some different aspects that the women perform with the American Legion? So we have the we have an auxiliary, you know, spouses of the uh, legionnaires mm -hmm. um, that you know they do their part in the community just like we do. I mean they. They do the poppy drive every year. Um, they go out to collect donations so that they can support different functions. Um, we, they help us with the, our children's Christmas party every year through some of those donations from the poppy drive. Mm -hmm. We do have a few uh, Legion members that are the females female. also. Right. We have one that's a past commander. Mm. Um, she's really always been active out of the out of the female legionnaires, mm -hmm. but uh, there are a few on the roster. <coughs> the uh, American Legion goes back, as I mentioned there, uh, formed in 1919, so we're over 100 years mm -hmm. and st still rolling. Yes. Um, <coughs> now this is a question that would normally be asked maybe later in the show here. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I didn't over overlook it. Uh, when an organization forms and been around this long, it certainly has developed a number of missions and goals. Uh, can you give us a little idea of what you may be perceiving in the future? Uh, what role the American Legion may continue to do, but maybe any new roles that the American Legion might actually participate in? Well, as far as benefits, uh, with all the post-9-11 veterans, uh, they were fighting to get those extra presumptive diseases added mm. to the list that help with their compensation. Um, with the 
this recent uh, slowdown in Afghanistan, they're trying to be a positive uh, influence on those veterans and make sure that they got somewhere to reach out to. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the two things I know of currently that they're working on. Uh, for our audience, <clears throat> that uh, if you're a regular participant in our audience, you may be aware of the uh, timing of our Valley Veterans programs. 9-11 uh, has been mentioned as, of course, a historical moment. Uh, Troy and Miami County is experiencing <clears throat> a uh, tremendous program uh, reminiscent of this time 20-some years ago of the 9-11 event. And uh, so at this point, that event may have already passed, but uh, the idea that we're looking at that weekend coming up here in September as a anniversary. It's easy to think about a celebration. It's not a celebration, it's an anniversary kind of thing. So when you're working with 9-11, post 9-11, from Desert Storm right up on through this uh, evacuation, this <clears throat> attempt to uh, bring civilians and Americans uh, and soldiers and other people home. Uh, would there be American Legion personnel meeting any of them initially, or how do they make that contact with these people? Well, they, they do reach out uh, at the transition centers when they're getting out. It's called TAPS. So they offer them uh, help with filing their compensation claims and getting mental health care if they need it. Uh, there is a transition point at each military base. And Wright Patterson Air Force has one out here in Dayton. So I think um, we're all veterans and it, you mentioned the fact that, and you did too, time went by and then you suddenly realize these organizations exist and it'd be nice to join one and so forth. Um, I think I wasn't really active in thinking about serving in a kind of a veterans organization until we had uh, the Miami Valley Veterans Museum. Miami Valley Veterans Museum, of course, sponsors uh, this program, Valley Veterans. Uh, the Miami Valley Veterans Museum is located in Troy, 2245 South County Road 25A. Uh, <clears throat> the museum has become quite a central uh, collection, you might say, not only of the artifacts generously devote, uh, donated to the museum now for years and years, but also a collection of stories of people. So it's the people's lives, the contributions by the soldiers, their stories that come alive at the Valley, Miami Valley Veterans Museum, and certainly are invited, all of you, uh, to visit our museum in Troy. Uh, Gentlemen, when you were uh, discharged the, back in the day, mm -hmm. I remember my discharge was 1972, quite some time ago, mm -hmm. and uh, different reactions existed relative to Vietnam and homecoming and so forth. Uh, describe your time in the military, uh, something perhaps that was rewarding to you that uh, you found most uh, contributing to what you believe is your character or your contribution today? I'd have to say it was the people that I met mm -hmm. that I served with um, from all over. I mean, I was in the Navy nuclear power field and um, the group of guys that, that I served with and the ship that I served on, the USS Enterprise, and mm. I just built a good group of friends that I still talk to today and go visit from time to time and you know I've done many things with them gone skydiving you know as an experience uh, one friend was close to home in, in, here in Piqua and uh, he was in Indiana and I drove over and spent the week with him you know just because he was close to town mm -hmm. I don't get to see him very often so I think it's the friendship and you know the camaraderie that you know we shared, I mean, when I first got to my ship, it was in dry dock, and we basically built it back together with the help of the shipyard and got it underway for the first time in, in six years. So, I mean, it was a. Interesting it's interesting. Experience. I think our audience is also imagining here you were on the USS Enterprise, certainly a famous 
uh, seaworthy vessel in our minds, but then you enjoyed jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it was definitely a, an experience, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> you survived very well. I did. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, the, uh, I haven't had that experience. I think I'll probably leave that to you younger <laughs> folks, the way that works there. Gary, how about you? Well, I was uh, in the nuclear power program also. Uh -huh. well, I was an electronics technician. <laughs> but uh, we didn't have to work as hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I spent my time on the USS Nimitz, and we were stationed out of Bremerton, Washington. Uh, I really enjoyed my time out there. I liked the outdoors. and. We had two dry dock periods and two six-month uh, west packs while I was on the ship. So uh, today's Navy is spending 11, 12 months at a time out at sea. Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference from what we had. Right. And we also had more carriers out at sea. Um, when we were in, there was one carrier on station, one transferring, and one off the coast of the United States. So there was six or seven at a time out at sea. Uh, nowadays, you're lucky to have four out at sea at a time, and uh, I think that's a big change in attitude and mm -hmm. and the way people look at the military now. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we was in during Ronald Reagan days, so uh -huh. uh, he was the man in, in my mind. Uh -huh. uh, he built the Navy up to what we had when we was in the service. Good to hear, and all you Navy vets out there are certainly applauding that as well. Mm -hmm. And, you can't uh, say a bad thing to my grandfather about Ronald Reagan. He'd kick <laughs> you out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. The, uh, so uh, I mentioned earlier when I was discharged and you were discharged and you uh, had served your opportunities there with the U.S. military. You were coming home, you know, looking forward to being back with family, looking forward to resuming or starting or initiating another career. And I know, Gary, you worked downtown at the VA mm -hmm. uh, to help with many of these veterans returning and been around here for a while. Uh, and the American Legion certainly uh, joins that effort from what I understand very well. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what you do down there. Uh, I'm a veteran service officer. Mm -hmm. I help the veterans file their claims with the VA. I'm an advocate between themselves and the VA. Uh, make sure that they get uh, all the benefits that, that they're due. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times when they come in, they don't have a, a clue what's going on, what they need to file. So I'll talk with them a little bit and pick their brains and kind of find out uh, where they served at and what injuries they may have had and uh, get the process going. Uh, the earlier they start that, the better. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. a Vietnam veteran comes in 50, 60 years later, it's harder to service connect something than someone just got out of service. Because they've got to show that what, what problems they have now was caused by something 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of a, a big difference in your timing when you come in, if you're going to be approved or not. The. Uh, <clears throat> Do you, either one of you recall back then when you did come home, uh, did one of the organizations such as American Legion, uh, were you aware of it at the time and the services that it provided just freshly out of the service yourself? I don't remember that. No, <laughs> my, my TAP class was helped me set my resume up and that was it. Mm -hmm. Where nowadays they help you set your resume up and explain all the benefits to you. It's a big change in how things are done. Big change, and of course, yes. electronic, uh, the number of uses of uh, email and websites and all, right. uh, all sorts of videos and so forth that I've seen, plenty of them all along the way. The, um, uh, over the years, uh, you've talked about the social aspect, talked about the Band of Brothers, talked about the uh, service that you provide to children right up through adults, uh, servicemen and women from what I don't consider too long ago, 9-11, uh -huh. and right up through now the evacuation from Afghanistan. Um, I, I think we're always in a state of anticipating what's next. And uh, it would seem like 
when the evacuation continues and finishes that there may be a number of individuals for years from even the deployment now and from the evacuation that may need the services of the American Legion. But I know there's other organizations too and we kid about the, somewhat the rivalry, the VFW and so forth. Uh, can you give us a little bit of comparison, contrast there on the, those organizations as far as the service? Um, I'm, not, I'm not looking to <laughs> <laughs> pull tricks on the VFW there. No. <laughs> Each organization does the same thing. It's just if you're eligible to join or not, mm -hmm. it's the only difference really. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the American Legion, as you stated at the beginning, was a wartime period program. Uh, it's no longer that. It's, it's eligibility is open to anyone that served uh, from 1941 on. Mm. Uh, where there used to be dead spots during peacetime, uh, short time between World War II and Korea and Korea and Vietnam. And then you had that large span from 75 to 90 where it was all peacetime service. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's been changed probably six years ago. Um, so eligibility is open to anyone who served honorably for the American Legion. Uh, VFW is still set up as a wartime period mm -hmm. and you actually have to have a uh, ribbon for being in in country for for the VFW. Mm -hmm. But as far as what we provide, it's, a, it's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Well, that is interesting. I, <coughs> I have a, a dear friend who <laughs> served in peacetime, but Berlin Wall, mm -hmm. Cuban Missile Crisis, and right. I keep attempting to convince him that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they kept the peace in a very strange and challenging time, right. that we all, all remember. And uh, so, because he doesn't place himself in the same category as those of us that may have served in wartime. Right. And I say, <laughs> you may have kept us out of war right. for the time right. it was. Mm -hmm. the, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you enjoy the back to the social aspect um, when you have an individual who comes to you whether it's by electronic uh, media uh, email website so forth what is uh, what are they looking for generally I mean I'm looking for a, a sense in my mind of what I'm kind of expecting you might share but what are they looking for when they call you? What's what's their need? What's what's their what's driving them to you? I would say that I, I think that you know they're looking for different kinds of services and how to get involved with guys like Gary and mm -hmm. you know his current position at the VA right now, trying to get answers to what they need to do, how they file their reports, and different uh, you know, information like that. Is it sometime with a, a client, I'll use that term, uh, it could go on for months, years, the communication, the establishment of a case? Uh, they're all different. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you're averaging three to four months to get a claim decided. Mm -hmm said the longer you wait to file the claim, the longer it's going to take maybe the process, you may go into the appeal process because you get that first denial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if someone goes in and files within the first year of getting out of service, as long as you still have that condition, they're going to service connected. So uh, everybody's different. depends on when they file and uh, if it shows up in their service treatment records, if they still actually have an issue. So somebody that somebody might come to the American Legion seeking help on these other matters of which you spend your time down at the VA. Right. And uh, I'm thinking that many times the image of the American Legion in people's minds, if they don't look into it, is of a social organization. I see That's that. That's correct. When right. in fact, of course, the, what you offer there is far, far before, beyond that tremendously. Um, the uh, so it's not, it's not like a, just a bunch of good old boys, it's a band of brothers seeking to help the community in general, exactly. many people, soldiers. The, uh, we've just got a couple of minutes left here uh, in Valley Veterans, and I'd like to remind our audience 
Valley Veterans uh, is programmed from out of DATV here down in Dayton. Uh, it uh, is placed on YouTube. These programs are on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and find the programs of which we've got about 10 of them now have been produced. And uh, the, I want to give some credit to Ted Jones, who's our uh, producer, editor, technician on all these programs here. The man behind the camera is way behind. To our DATV staff here, Cheryl in the booth and Jackie down here on the floor. And with us today, too, uh, <coughs> Karen Perk, who is the executive director and project manager of the Miami Valley Veterans Museum. Takes a lot of people to do anything that we do, and everybody is a volunteer, particularly in this particular aspect. Uh, so I'd like to really commend and bring attention to those things. Our program is also aired on uh, local public access stations throughout the Miami Valley, about eight counties and uh, 991 again through Spectrum. We invite you to look through those programs. Uh, gentlemen, the, uh, <coughs> we could probably think of a thousand things later on <laughs> to chat about. <laughs> and uh, I want to just express my gratitude. I've learned so much more from you guys and from doing this about the American Legion and uh, experiencing a sense of gratitude for an organization that I didn't give much thought to before, but I really do now. You've really extended yourself into the community and made a big difference. It made a big difference all around. Well, Gary and Craig, I really want to thank you very much for coming down here today to DATV in Dayton. You've shared uh, the heart of the American Legion, given an opportunity for the public to know it much further beyond what we knew before. Uh, we uh, invite you to uh, uh, join us at the museum at any time. We'd look forward to your coming as uh, visitors and we feel like you're just part of the members now, now that I understand the American Legion. So again, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you.